if you move us towards no deal so that you're literally going to crash out of the European Union and you're going to come out of all your preferential trading agreements at one go, something no modern developed country has ever done when you can't possibly predict what the consequences are other than that they would be serious and all the advice is that they're serious. I just can't believe that this is going to happen. But I speak then, you know, as someone who, who likes to look at politics as reasonably rational, and frankly today that may be a foolish way of looking at politics, but I can't think that he would want to come in as Prime Minister and take that big a risk on your shoulders when you've got so much of opinion telling you it's the wrong thing to do. Let's imagine he does have a plan, that he manages to pull this one off. He gets a concession of sorts that make it possible to leave on the 31st with that deal. When we finally know the house we're moving to, we know the house we're leaving, when we finally know the house we're moving to, before we make that final move, we should have the endorsement of the British people in a referendum. So there's no deal that would let you put a second referendum to one side? There is nothing no, that would let you stick by that democratic mandate? Right, because I think that, that what you need is then a debate as to what the, the future house really looks like. Why is it undemocratic to say, before you take a step of this magnitude, do you want to think again? Because you sound like a crack record now, and surely somebody of your calibre and experience could actually help get the country to a place where we moved on, where we did what was best economically without having to rerun the vote. Couldn't you be the person that steps in, you know, part of a, 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 you know, a national opposition or whatever, to try and make that work? To make it work how? I mean, how do you make it work? I mean, I agree, the principal underlying view um, of the majority of people in this country who aren't fixed remain or fixed leave, their view is, end this nightmare. But here's the problem. If you end up with no deal, you don't end this argument. You're then going to have to go back to Europe and spend the next years out of the European Union trying to renegotiate a preferential trade agreement. Tony Blair three times Labour Prime Minister. You sound like a Lib Dem now. You are closer to them on Brexit <laughs> yeah, like policies and everything <laughs> else. I'm wondering whether you, if it came to a general election, where, whether that's where your vote goes. No, I'm, 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 not a, I'm not a Lib Dem. I'm not any different from how I've always been. I think this is the position that I've always adopted on, on Europe and I've always been in favour of Britain remaining in Europe. But if you're asking me about the state of the Labour Party, look, there'll be a moment to debate the state of the Labour Party. Uh, it's just not now. We've got to deal with Brexit first. Well, actually, I was asking whether you could imagine yourself voting Lib Dem. I don't want to vote Lib Dem. I want to vote Labour. But, you know, I'm, I, won't, I won't resolve the fact it's, you know, the Labour Party's in a difficult situation at the moment, and particularly with this anti-Semitism business. I mean, Brexit for me, by the way, is not a reason for voting Labour or not voting Labour. I've got long-standing friends in the Labour Party were pro-Brexit. I don't, you know, that doesn't mean to say we don't share the same values on other things. The anti-Semitism thing is a real problem f for me because I think it's just fundamentally repugnant to everything the Labour Party should stand for. So I hope we can sort it out because if we don't, I think, yeah, there's going to be a big problem. Would you be able to vote Labour as things stand? Well, let's, we'll get to that. Let's, let's hope that the Labour Party seizes and grips this anti-Semitism thing and deals with it. But can Jeremy Corbyn be the one to turn things around now for his party? Well, it's, uh, yeah, it's difficult because those views are obviously around Israel, are shared by him and some of the people around him. So he's going to have to himself, I think, undergo a change in the way he looks at this question. Because I, I am absolutely sure that he would say, no, 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 of course I'm not anti-Semitic, I'm just hostile to Israel's aggression. But that analysis and you know, the Israeli-Palestinian issue is an issue I know very deeply, I continue to work on it. That analysis is just, it's, it's completely partial. You will be aware of the talk of plots to replace the Labour leader now. Keir Starmer and Tom Watson are the main names um, in the ring. Are they men you could work with? Have they reached out to you? Uh, no, look, I'm, I'm not engaged in any plots to remove Jeremy Corbyn, and I don't, I don't know that there is a plot you have a Tory party that's able to behave with a, an almost surreal sense of irresponsibility at the moment because of the weakness of the Labour Party. 
The weakness of the Labour Party facilitates the right wing, always has done, by the way. It's, it's what the left does when it indulges itself in sectarian politics of a far left variety. The right then feel we can do whatever we want with the country because in the end of the day, if that's the alternative, we can still get re-elected. I mean, to have sensible, serious people coming behind Boris Johnson on no deal Brexit, you know, on the basis that, well, you know, Boris, you know, you know what he's like, maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't, but who knows. I mean, how can we just, we, we're sort of numbed at this, by the state of our politics at the moment. It, it's incredible. But they're able to do that because Labour's weak. Where, where were we in the European elections? The fourth. 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 Yeah. And where are we in Scotland? Something like fifth? I mean, <laughs> it, it's just, anyway. When you look at British politics right now, where do you find your optimism? Well, that's a really good question, actually. Uh, I think I find my optimism um, only in the fact that there are large numbers of people who find the present situation unacceptable. What is difficult is that it's not clear what the right political way forward is in order to give voice to that group of people. That's very difficult. And so I'm more pessimistic about the state of the two main political parties that have governed Britain on and off for what is it, the last hundred years. I'm more pessimistic about that than I've ever been. I think both of them are in deep and serious trouble. But if I have any cause for optimism, it's that I do think that's acknowledged by a large number of British people. Tony Blair, thank you. Thank you.